you been looking for a business podcast with hosts and guests who don't have a stick up their ass? Yeah, I said it. Damn! Well, if so, welcome to your new home, brother. Brother. This is My Fence Life. Woo! Our three passions are beer, bourbon, and business. And probably in that order. We're bringing on business owners who share tips, tricks, and behind-the-scenes stories to help your business be more successful. And we drink during the show. So no matter what industry you're in, pop a cold one and come on in. Welcome to the My Fence Life Studio. Oh, what's happening, fellas? Be nice if I had my mic in here, man. I've been sitting here busy talking to the guest and totally forgot to bring my mic out. But it's all right. We got it going on. So, hey, guys, I got an awesome guest tonight. Um, he's uh, he's the man. I love this guy. I met him in Vegas. And we cut up, man. We had a hell of a time. He's, a, I mean, guy sharp as a tag. Anyway, let me tell you a little bit about him. He's a California native, okay? He lives just outside of uh, west of Sacramento, I believe it was. This cat owns eight houses in California, so apparently he's got more money than the fence king. I'm going to have to figure out what the hell he's doing and how he's got all that cash. Anyway, he's got a degree in computer technology and business. Uh, he He helped take an idea that was only alive on paper, and he brought it to life in just two years. He helped make that happen. Um, he started out on the production floor and uh, worked his way up, man. You know, so now this product is making a splash in the fencing industry. It's a tool that my guys use here at Fence King, and they love it. They fight over it whenever we got a job to do that we need this tool. And uh, in the just seven short years, man, he's worked his way up from the bottom to now he's the CEO of the entire company. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's bring him on right now. Good old brian harris how you doing man i'm doing good how you doing i'm doing great bro i'm doing Perfect. great so guys brian is the ceo of uh us hammer which is a tool my guys absolutely love man we've been using the rhino and they they'll fight if you know we we go ahead and post our schedule a week in advance brian so the mm-hmm. guys know what they're doing and if they got a job that's got to pound some posts you know what that, that's the that's the morning they're in early because they want to make sure that they get that hammer before anybody else does. We like to hear that, dude. They love it, man. Um, you know, uh, I've seen some videos out there. Mark Olson did a video about you know pounding post and so forth, and um, U.S. Hammer was on there. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. It did great, man. You know, I, I like the versatility of it. But look, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about it right now. I've, I've got some stuff I want to tackle. I want to get with you on. So um, when we were in Vegas, you had mentioned to me that the um, that there was a patent and that you had some other companies wanting to buy your patent. And you're like, no, we're not selling this thing. Yep, that's correct. We own three patents on the U.S. Hammer version, um, three actual patents, not patent pending. Um, Rhino is one of the companies that have stepped in that we're talking to on the side, but yeah, we're not, we're not going to sell it now. So, we like to affect it. So what do these patents do that set your post driver apart from the others that, that we're seeing out there in the market today? All right. Well, yeah, the patent set us aside because you can't copy it. So, so you're not going to see another look like us hammer or anything that runs like a us hammer because we'll come after you. You know, that was our safety <laughs> net at that one. Um, we designed it so we wanted a, a harder hitting driver, a little bit slower, but harder hitting. Um, mm-hmm. we pretty much developed the company to be all customer service oriented for the big fencers to the small fencers. We want everybody to feel important. So, guys, I want to tell you right now, this is the reason, one of the reasons why I'm talking this cat right now. So, my guys, you know, knuckleheads, right? They're out in the field. Um, they were driving some post, and I don't think they had the right adapter on or something. You know the story, Brian. 
And yeah. they ended up using a hand maul to tap it off because it was getting stuck because they didn't have the right chuck on it, like knuckleheads. They cracked the the the, uh, the housing, right? Was it yeah. the housing? It cracked was the receiver the cup where okay. you put the post in, yeah. Yeah, the receiver cup. And um, I called uh, Colin over at Mr. Fence Tools. Colin, and I was yeah. like, hey, man, can you help me out? He's like, oh, I know the guys over there. Let me give him a shout. Next thing you know, I get an email. Hey, Fence King. We're sending you a uh, another housing free of charge. I was like, "What? Hold on a second. I called Colin. I'm like, "Dude, this cat's sending me a whole another housing for nothing." And it was all my guys' fault. And they're like, "Man, these guys have great customer service." So that right there told me when I got to Vegas, I'm going to the U.S. Hammer booth because I got to meet the guys that are, that are stepping up the game in the customer service industry. That meant a lot, man. And I called Colin like on a Thursday, and I think Monday, it was either Monday morning or Monday afternoon. I had my receiver. Yep. Tuesday that's we had. What we th- that's what we thrive on, you know. We want want you to be happy just because your guys mess it up, you know. We understand. I mean, if it's a bigger unit, we might have to work on it, but something small like that, I want you to keep driving. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, so what, what inspired the development of, of the U.S. Hammer? And, and what challenges were you looking to address when it came to installing fence? So the engineer, he likes to build everything tough. Over-engineer it. He wanted to build something that would stand the life of it so we could actually make a name for it. Um, coming in the fencing industry, we realized that the ground conditions are different in different areas. And then for most of the gas-powered ones, you can't drive in a harder area or a harder ground with the gas. So we wanted to tackle that one head on. And that's what we did. We tackled it head on. Well, I'm glad you said that because I was on your website doing a little research before we uh, recorded this. And, you know, the U.S. Hammer delivers 50% more driving force than any other existing gas and or electric post driver out there. So that is correct. How were you able to do this and other drivers on the market haven't been able to do this. That's the technology I'm talking about. So the way we work is completely different from all the other drivers on the market. We don't use a piston that pulls up air that pulls up a little nine ounce anvil. We pick up a, a two pound piston, drop that thing out off of a 400 pound spring 600 times a minute. Just like if you were hitting it on the top with the sledgehammer. You know, so we took away a lot of the gaskets. We took away a lot of the, the what we would consider operational air points and tried to minimize that so you have that harder hit. Boom, boom. It's a slower beat per minute, but you actually get a harder hit, which allows you to drive most more posts and harder ground and bigger posts. Yeah, because we can drive a three-inch post, with, I think – with the hammer, but I can't with my other driver. Yes. You can drive up to a three eighths post. I was just on a field in a uh, above Fresno, it's Rocky area. And we were driving two and seven eighths, uh, Bob wire mm-hmm. fence posts with it. And we were driving them at foot and a half down. And these farmers, they, they have the big Montana's, they have the big drivers, but every once in a while they can't get their tractors in there. And mm-hmm. our driver hit it all day long, sold four of them that day. Dude, you know what I love about how versatile it is? So we drive 10-foot Postmasters a lot and 10-foot uh, 2 and 3 eighths and 2 and 7 eighths, right? Some yeah. people would say 2 and a half and 3 inch, yeah. depending on, you know, who you're, you're ordering from, right? So um, what we did was is the handles. My guys love the handles because they can pull them off quick. I mean, it's like within a couple minutes, got the handles off. No tools needed. And then they went ahead, and uh, I don't know if maybe this was designed to do this or not, but they made some handle extensions. So oh, now, yeah. so now they're not now they're not on a six foot ladder. So I get a video from one of the jobs. I'm like, what the hell is that? Oh well, we made some longer handles because we didn't want to get on a step stool. We didn't want to get on a ladder. But is it working? Yeah, I right, keep rolling with it. You know, so. It's nice, man, in the way it breaks down and so compact, and it's got that handle on top. So when you're driving, say, four-foot chain link, 
you're not having to stoop down and twist those handles. You got the handle up at the top with the trigger. Rock and roll, baby. That's it. Knock it out. That's it. That's it. That was part of another design that we wanted was you don't have to keep wiring in triggers or, you know, the versatile of on the extensions, off the extensions, on the on the driver or on the top. We thought that should be all incorporated in one, you know, so yeah. no extra money. A lot of thought went into that, man. A lot. So a key feature of the U.S. Hammer is its design. So how does this design make it more convenient for contractors? Is it because of what we just talked about, being able to dismantle it quickly, put it together quickly, the handle on top? What, what else do you have? Yes. So we built it. We built it. We built it out of all solid aluminum, but we build all the pieces in-house. So that means if you do have a problem, it's a tool. It's going to happen. Guys drop it. Something happens. It's going to need to be fixed. We have a lot of quick fixes enabled to where we can get you up and running with very little downtime. And then all the parts we do in-house. So it's not a fact you call me, oh, I don't have them right now. I have them back ordered. Um, usually I have dedicated machines for dedicated parts. So that's not an issue with us. So is the reason why it's called U.S. Hammers because it's all made in the U.S.? That's correct. We really? take pride in that. Yeah, the whole thing is, oh, the whole thing, even the springs inside. We don't manufacture the springs, um, so we are at the mercy of one third-party person, but we buy them by the truckload, so that's not an issue with us. But, mm -hmm. yeah, we make everything in-house in California. Nice, man. Yeah, we, we take pride in that. That's something that when we set up the business model – floor was we were going to build all the pieces in in-house so we didn't have to order anything and we could jump on it if something needed to be changed we can jump on it and make the changes real quick in-house and so that was that was the big part of it and customer service because all of us all of us partners hate when you call that customer number and it's press one press two you oh, know yeah you know what I mean? Or leave an email and then you wait a couple of days and you don't get no answer. So usually when you call, you're probably going to get me. So do you know Al Martin with Martin's with uh, Fence Armor? Have you no, met I, him? I have not yet. Dude, you need to talk to him. He is like Amer American made down to the screws that he buys. Yes. He makes sure everything's American made. And if you bring up the word China... You just better sit down because you're about to get schooled. Al will go <laughs> off on your ass. Great guy. We, uh, me and uh, Shane Millerlight drinking cat. We, uh, we contribute him to uh, putting the Mars rover on Mars, bro. Oh, really? He, yeah, he helped design parts that are now living on the Mars rover that are on Mars. The dude's a phenomenal man. He is one smart cat. He's got. I did his bio. And his bio was so long. Uh, I had people go, man, what else are you going to say about this guy? He had more degrees and more uh, credibility than anybody I've ever had on the show. Phenomenal That's guy. That's awesome. That's so, awesome. Yeah, it is, man. So anyway, let's uh, get back on track here, brother. All right. So, uh, so you know, this may be an obvious question, but I want to know your thoughts. Why the Honda four-stroke engine? I mean – was it because of its, you know, easy startup every time, or was it its notable track of, uh, you know, record on its track record on uh, reliability? Yeah. So, so the Honda motor, we couldn't, we couldn't, we couldn't pass up the Honda motor. Um, we did go with the GX50, which is bigger, which gives us a little bit more stability and startability. But man, that thing will be almost broken and still run. I mean, how can you beat that? That's the only thing that's on our machine that we regret that is not American made. So um, we we've, we've tried several different ones. We even tried building our own gas engine, but uh, as the, you just couldn't pass up the Honda reliability. Starts easy. We've had them broken where they're pouring out oil and they still run. Man, those Hondas are unreal. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a big fan of the Briggs. You get a Briggs, it's like, all right, we're good. But, man, I see a Honda, and I'm like, oh, yeah. This thing's <laughs> yeah. going to be falling apart. I don't know how them guys do it, man. No. So when I was at the Finch show, man, I found out something that I didn't know about U.S. Hammer. And a little side note here, fellas. This is why I recommend going to a Finch show. 
This is why I recommend going to the FWA show in Vegas, the AFA show, wherever it is. I think this year coming up, it's in Nashville. Um, because you end up learning about things before your competitors will, and it helps you stay ahead of the curve. So the thing that I found out about U.S. Hammer that I didn't know is that they have more than this just driving various styles of fencing. Their, their drivers will drive those dirt barrier, you know, those silt fence stakes. When you're putting up the um, the silt fences, they're like, what, two foot tall or something with the, the uh, what is that? Kind of like a mesh the or something? Fence. Yeah, the yeah, silt, the silt fence. fencing. Yeah. So your hammers are designed to drive those stakes also, right? Yes, yes. And, those and wattle stakes. Okay. And... You uh you also make jackhammers for concrete demo. That is correct. We do how have did, a <laughs> how did you get into the world of concrete, man? You I mean no. I when That's, I saw it, I thought to myself, this is a no-brainer. Why did not I think that these guys weren't making jackhammers? It's the same thing, right? Yep. Well, the insides are a little bit different on the gear ratio, but the patent technology in there is the same. Um, that's we just wanted to get in there because that's how hard our hammers hit. They have that dead blow. It allows you to go. Th we have a 60 pound hammer that allows you to go through six inches of concrete, no time flat. When we were at the world of concrete, we ended up doing six yards of concrete when we were there with just one, one of our uh, breakers. So yeah, we looked into the di diversity of it. And um, that one breaker, we can also turn over the tent stakes guys use it now over the hilt as they prefer that one. Heavy. Really? It'll drive a, yeah, it'll drive us. It'll drive us. What is it? Four foot tent stake down through asphalt, in probably about forty five seconds. Jesus Christ! Yeah, <laughs> dude, y'all are just making a freaking splash, man. I mean, yeah, yeah. So you're not you're not only affecting the uh, the fence industry, and now now you're you're tackling the uh, concrete industry. Yeah, we've been tackling that one for just as long as the fence industry. How long has it taken for the fence industry to catch on? Um, not very long. Not very long. We've met some key players in the fencing industry. Um, we went out on advertising. Um, it just taken off. If you've ever used one of our drivers versus another one, um, it's hands down night or day, you know. Um, so, and let's see, when was the last fence tech? That was in uh, Oklahoma City. That was in Oklahoma So, City. you met my son Dylan, I yes. believe. So I told Dylan, I said, look, Dylan, I'm busy. I'm running around like crazy. Matt Warner kind of had me lasso to his booth, and we were doing interviews. I said, you need to go out there and find us a driver. And he came back, well, you're a driver. He's like, I'm really like this. So then I started seeing some buzz on Facebook, and then I also started asking questions, and people were talking about it. And then I think somebody got it in their hands, and they started doing some testing. And – it just took off, man. I was like, is this thing really as good as it sounded when I saw it? Well, when Dylan saw it at Fence Tech? And everybody said, yeah. So, of course, I had to jump on it and grab it, you know? Yeah. And then, uh, oh, uh, Shane Cat, and I was like, dude, you, he he bought another Rhino. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, well, we already got him, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, bro, get rid of that trash. Get the hammer. You got to go with the hammer. So I've been messing with him. That's it. Yeah, he's on the board now. He's on U.S. Hammers team now. So we'll see. Yeah, he bought uh he bought a couple of them um, uh in Las Vegas, did? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Nice man. So swipe that. I need to get him to come over to my booth and swipe that credit card. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that makes it all worthwhile. Yeah. Anyway, man. So um, we touched base on this a little earlier. I said it, but. We didn't expound on it. And this is pretty big news. So U.S. Hammer has a battery-powered post driver? Yes, that is correct. I, 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 look, you got my attention, man. How many damn volts does this thing take to drive a post? I mean, and, and what benefits does the battery technology offer? You know, how does it enhance our user experience? All right, so in California after 2025, we can't sell the Honda GX50 here in California. And we have PG&E, which is our biggest power company that uses our drivers to drive force. So we developed it. It takes 56 volts to drive one of those, 
to drive it. We use a brushless DC motor inside the hammer. It still has the same drive force as the gas one. Um, we went with the 64 Ego battery system because it doesn't run slow. So that means the hammer doesn't slow down over time as the battery's dying. It just dies. Um, huh. You can get about a 45 minute charge out of one battery. Um, we offer a battery pack to where you can get probably four to five hours out of it, but that's a pretty spendy battery. And Versatil, it, it's lighter. Um, it's ready to go. There's no starting, no oil, no nothing. Encased housing makes it a little bit more durable for the back of a work truck. You know, quick so, charge batteries. So when I was in your booth at the Vegas uh, fence show, the, the you had like a, um, it was almost like a backpack. Yeah. So, it's not like the battery is adding weight to the unit. No, you're actually putting it on the back, strapping it on like 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 a like a school bag, right? That's correct. And it and it's less fatigue on the on the user. Yes, it is, and you can have it sitting on the ground. You don't necessarily have to wear it in your back. But what that does is it keeps the vibration off the actual post driver. Anybody that's drove post know that you got a vibration there. And that mm-hmm. does over time weaken the batteries over over a period of time. And to okay. save in the cost of it, we took away with all the all the fancy dampening systems that we'd have to put in to actually put the battery on the unit. And so we just dropped it on a backpack. You can either have your guys drag it on a cart or they can wear it on their back, which dri- drives that unit down to about 30 pounds versus about 40 to 42 pounds. Wow kind of look like ghostbusters out there man that's it <laughs> <laughs> so um i'm loving that backpack option man and you get four to five hours of hammering um the backpack that it depends we have two different backpack systems the first one takes a, a small 56 volt you get about 45 minutes out of that but that two batteries you can run all day long because the charge time takes about 20 to 25 minutes per battery. Um, that's the first one. And that's a smaller battery, the big backpack unit, which is pretty spendy. It's about 1200 bucks. That one will give you four hours of runtime and that's a commercial grade, but the, um, the charge time on that one's a little bit slower. Uh, I think this, the charge time's about a 40, 40 minute charge on that one to get it fully charged up, but you can get about four hours out of it. So, man, you really did work your way up from the bottom to the CEO. Cause you sound like a sales guy. You know, everything. <laughs> Most CEOs my... don't know anything. No, nah, yeah, no, nah, that's, that's, that's my job. You know? So I tackle it on, I, I handle pretty much all the sales and then all the customer service I handle. Okay. So let me ask you this. So I buy a U.S. hammer. What kind of maintenance am I looking at? I mean, and, how does it compare to the maintenance of other post drivers that are out there on the market today? Well, the difference is, is you don't need to do any maintenance on our machine itself. The only maintenance you need to do is to the Honda GX50. Change the oil, say, every six months and put gasoline in it. The internal works of ours works a lot different. So we can use a high temperature, high life grease. We had an engineering company came in and built us a special grease for our machines um, that keeps it lubricated for life. It uses a silicone like graphite thing. So once it coats the gears, it's pretty much solid. You're good to go. Man, y'all put some money into these things. Yes, we did. <laughs> wow. Wow. How many partners y'all got in, in, involved in U.S. Hammer? There's three partners completely in, in U.S. Hammer. Nice. So, Man. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> um, so lastly... Because this is asked me about my day. We don't go an hour long on these. I try to keep them about 25 minutes or so. Okay. Um, do you have anything in the future that's going to be happening with U.S. Hammer? Any innovations or developments that we can look forward to? Or are they still top secret Area 51 stuff and you can't let them out yet? <laughs> no, we can't. I can't really let them out. But we do have innovations on the, on board. Um we're constantly innovating in drive caps. We're listening to a lot of fencing companies. So one thing in the future is if you got something you want to drive and you're having a hard time driving it or deform it, give us a call. We're willing and able to tackle it on a day by day basis. Yeah, because it didn't take y'all any time to get a postmaster cap out. No, 
no. Once uh, I have to give that one to Alex Harris of Unlimited Fencing. He called me up. He's in. He's right on the base of the Appalachian Mountains, and he was having one hell of a time um, driving them. So um, he's the first one that we tackled that one too for the Postmasters. And now with a Postmaster drive cap, you can beat it on concrete. You can beat it in whatever. It's not going to deform. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Alex is uh, Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fencing Unlimited. Yeah. Fencing good guy. Unlimited. He is a good guy. Yeah. Good cat. So, um, man, thanks for getting on the show, bro. I really, I really wanted to get you on while we were in Vegas. Things were crazy. And I didn't get to catch up with you. Unfortunately, guys, I think uh, old Willie Boy was uh, coloring some coloring books, and he got on. You got on his show, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> I messed with Dan about coloring, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, I happened uh, to get on his show. Yeah, I saw you over there talking to him. I'm like, oh man, he must have baited him or something. <laughs> yeah, I'm a sucker. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, look, man, it was great having you on the show. I appreciate it. And uh, I hope we're going to look forward, man. We need to get together and possibly do something a little special for the fencing industry. I got some ideas I want to throw at you and uh, see if maybe uh, you're interested in it. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Sounds great. All right. Good deal, man. Hey, it was great talking to you. And guys, y'all keep on fencing. You've been listening to My Fence Life. Yes, we like to have fun. Beer, bourbon, and business. And although we have fun, we take our business very seriously. Dan Blanc is known as the Fence King, and he's been providing high-quality fence solutions since 1999. He's connected to industry leaders, business leaders, financing experts, and marketing gurus that will be on the show to talk about their success stories. To find out more about us, hit the website at myfencelife.com. Listen to the show wherever you consume your content. We are everywhere. Apple, Spotify, and Google Podcast. See you next time on My Fence Life.